this is the time when you can just whisper a prayer to God and let God know that right now that you need him more than ever before. God is saying that today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, God is saying that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. So this is the time, this is the hour when you can lift up your voice right now. Give God praise for what God means to you. Is there one person here who don't mind shouting out that if it had not been for the Lord on our side today? So I dare you to call out to him right now. Open your mouth and cry out to him right now. Cry out to him right now. Oh yeah, the praises are going up. I hear the praises are going up. For when praises go up, blessings come down. Hallelujah. 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 For God is moving today. Ever before. And we right now, we don't need to give for what God has already done in our lives. And if you don't know, if he doesn't do anything else, you can always shout out, I will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah.
God, we believe that you're able and that you're willing. And so move God. Move right now. with the Samana consideration. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. One thing that I realize in life is that the easiest thing to be broken is trust. And the truth of the matter is that all of us at one point or another in our lives have been at a place in our lives where we've placed our confidence in someone only to find out that they have broken the trust. Sometimes when that trust is broken, we find ourselves living a whirlwind, not realizing if we're coming or going, living life on the edge, living in trust is a very important emotion, trust is a very important feeling, trust is something that we all need in order to navigate life. And the truth of the matter is that many times many of us have gotten lost, our trust has been misplaced. And when your trust is in place, you get to a place where you're lost and you're depending on everyone, everything to bring you back to that place. You know, I'll never forget the time when I was driving when I first arrived here in Baltimore City. I did not have an idea of how to navigate the city. And while I was driving, I had to use my GPS. And what I discovered is that when you don't know the route, it's easy for you to take the wrong turn. And oftentimes when I was driving, I was driving, I was driving from Baker and Carey Street all the way to the east side. And so I had to get on 83. And as I was driving to get on 83, I was supposed to get off on Guilford Avenue. But instead of getting off because the directions were there, the navigator was telling me, the GPS was telling me where to get off. But for some reason or another, I was so focused on what I could see on the screen until I missed my turn. And the good news is that even though I missed my turn and I had missed the exit that I needed to get off on, the voice on the navigator said redirecting. I listened to the voice and stopped looking at the screen and I redirected myself back to the place where I needed to go. And oftentimes that's what the way life is. That when we take the wrong turn, when we, when we miss our exodus, our exit, God has a way of the GPS system to re-navigate us back to where we need to be. Have you been there in your life? When you place your trust in a person and when you realize you start listening to the voice of God and God's voice just said, Redirecting, redirecting, redirecting. I come here to tell you today that this proverb 3, 5, and 7 is a navigational system for those of us who've gotten off of the wrong turn. And the writer of this, this very profound, prolific, and uh, very 
familiar text is one Solomon. Solomon was one of the sons of David, considered to be one of the wisest men in the world. And you remember Solomon, he was so wise and so handsome until he had so many concubines. And it's easy to get off track and distracted life, draw away from your purpose. Solomon fell in love with so many women. But then he came to his senses. And here as he sits down and penned these words, I can imagine in my own life, in my own mind's eye, that he looked back over his life. He looked at where God had brought him from to where he had brought him to. And these words fell from his lips. He said, trust in the Lord. The first thing I want you to know is that your trust must not be in a person. Your trust must not be in a place or a thing. But Solomon makes it very clear that his trust is in the Lord. And the truth of the matter is that when your trust is in the Lord, we know one thing about the Lord, that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. Understand that there are many lords. There are lords all around the kingdoms and lords in this time and Solomon times. The, the Lord was the chief overseer. That he was the, the boss. He owned everything. And so when Solomon talked about trusting in the Lord, he is not talking about trusting in your bank account. He's not talking about trusting in your president and trusting in your government. But he said, trust in the Lord. But not only do you trust in the Lord, he tells us how to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Is there anybody here that only had a halfway trust? Is there anybody here who can identify with the place where you just trust God just a little bit? You trust as long as you can see God. And the problem is that when you are navigating life by what you see, you'll find out that your trust will waver based upon what you feel. You can't trust the Lord with just your heart or with what you feel. God is saying, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thy own understanding. But listen, Solomon, listen, listen, listen what Solomon said. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Look at your neighbor and say, won't he do it? That's right, I come to tell that I don't acknowledge the fact that I got degrees. That didn't bring me here. The fact that I, that I got a good job did not bring me here. The fact of my zip code where I live did not bring me here. But I come to tell somebody that when you really start trusting in the Lord with all thy heart, and when you start leaning not into your own understanding, the truth of the matter is that you realize that you didn't get here because you were cute. You didn't get here because you were so good. But if it had not that's right, it was the Lord who did it. It's not by choice, it's not by chance that I'm standing here today. It's not by choice, but my blessings keep on uh, flowing. But I know that I owe everything to God. So everything that's good, everything that's wonderful, look at your neighbor and shout out, God did it. That's one thing you gotta understand, that God did it. God woke me up this morning. God started me on my way. God gave me the activity of my limbs. And when God did it, I can look up and say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. And you've got to learn how to develop a thank you attitude. Is that by finding y'all on Facebook or Instagram saying that you got a thankful attitude? Because it could have been the other way. You could have been dead a long time ago. And because God did it, I can lift up my voice and say, thank you. Thank you, God, for being a mother for me when I was motherless. Thank you, God, for being a father for me when I was father. I thank God for what God has done. And because God has been good to me, I'm going to stand here today and tell somebody that God has redirected my life. And you might saying, I mean, uh, how is he doing that today? The places I used to go, I don't go no more. The things I do no more. Because the Lord has redacted my life. And so I stand here today to tell you that you got to get to a place where you learn how to trust.
trust in the Lord. You ought to, you ought to trust him when things are good. You, you ought to trust him when things are bad. Yeah, I trust him. Yeah, I trust him. Because if it happened for the Lord on my side, if it had not been for the Lord keeping me, if it had not been for the Lord giving me joy in the time of sorrow, hope for tomorrow, I'm glad today that he's good to me. was too mean to live uh, and not fit to die. I, I had the handcuffs of hell uh, around my wrist. Uh, I had the shackles of damnation uh, around my feet. Uh, but I heard uh, the voice of Jesus saying, uh, look at your neighbor. Uh, say neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. The Lord has been good to me. Somebody say, neighbor, he woke me up in the morning. Neighbor, he started me on my way. Yeah, yeah. Talk about me. I'm going to trust you. And it reminds me of what Jesus did. Over over two thousand years ago, uh, they marched from Judgment Hall uh, to Judgment Hall. Uh, they beat him uh, all night long, uh, but he never said one word. Uh, they put nails in his hand, uh, put nails in his feet. Uh, but he never said a mumbling word. He stayed on the cross. Yes, he did. They took a spear, pitched him in the side. But he stayed on the cross. He stayed there until the sun started dripping blood. He stayed there until the sky pulled back the curtains. He stayed there. Yeah, they took him down. They put him in a bar on night Friday. He stayed there. They put him in a bar of tune all day Saturday. He stayed there. And while he was there in the tomb, somebody said that he went down uh, to the lower parts of hell. Uh, while he was dead, uh, went down to where old death was. Uh, went down to where old brain was. Uh, death uh, made a phone call uh, to Satan. Uh, he said, Satan, uh, he's down here now. Uh, he said, Satan, uh, he ain't go nowhere. Uh, Satan, uh, Ever left my grips with all the call. He said, no, listen here. Listen, Gray, how's he doing down there? Satan, I got Abraham. I got Isaac. I got Jacob. And nobody has been able to escape my grips. He stayed there all day sad. He stayed there preaching in the pits of hell all day Saturday. But Sunday night, about 11.30, Satan got a call from grave. He said, Satan, something's going on down 
lot of shaking. Then, uh, 11, uh, 50 that night, uh, another call came. Uh, Satan, uh, something's going on here. Uh, Come focus shouting. Uh, I think we better send uh, some reinforcements. Uh, about midnight, uh, look at your neighbor uh, and shout out midnight. Uh, I heard it. Uh, Somebody say that Jesus snatched the keys from her grave. All at the door. Yeah. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm done. I'm going to take my seat. But I want you to trust in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. 